All right, so I've received a few comments about this video right here. Does this look like Houdini? And yeah, we're gonna make a tutorial on it. The idea initially came to me when I saw this video get uploaded by 3D Bonfire. I think I saw it on Twitter first. Uh, he does a little breakdown of this style of animation done in C4D. Uh, a little bit different to what we're gonna be doing today, but I thought, damn, this looks replicatable in Blender. I think I can definitely do this. So we did. So we're gonna start things off fairly simple and we're gonna use this shape from my motion primitives pack, which you can find on my Gumroad for free, by the way. Uh, just saying, if you wanna follow along exactly, it is there, link in the description. I will say that this tutorial is going to be a little bit fast paced. So if you are very new to the software, this is one of the first things that you're doing. Maybe this isn't the tutorial for you. Save it, come back at a little later date, because I will gloss over some things that I'm going to kind of expect you to know as basic knowledge. You know, that's not a call out or anything, just like that just a bit of advice so the first thing that we're do is we're going to come in here and we're going to put a sub div on it maybe twice apply it this looks good to me i think that that geometry is going to work just fine all right so first thing that we're going to do we're going to make a, ourselves a little circle we're going to scale it up we're going to make it a face inset it and then we're going to delete the center face here and we're going to extrude it up uh just a little bit something say like that now we're going to come here we're going to subdivide it like so, we've got this kind of like ring thing going on. Now we're gonna scale it in so that it's just barely not touching. This object is a little bit uneven on the way that it goes, but that's fine. We're not looking for perfectness here. Once you have it set to the scale you like, you're gonna come here to frame 70. You're going to place a keyframe there. Now we're gonna to go to frame one. We're gonna drag it down, scale it in. Then we're gonna come down to frame 139, scale it up or move it up, scale it out. And you know, I'm having a lot of trouble talking, but basically we just want this kind of emotion so that it's overlapping, but not touching anything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this ring, we're gonna duplicate it, we're gonna select these keyframes, and we're gonna make sure that our frame that was on frame one goes down to frame 35, roughly, so that you've got this kind of follow-up motion here. You just wanna make sure that the top ring clears by the end of your animation. So however long that is, I think this is about as good as we're gonna get it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our main object, we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna put dynamic paint on our guy. We're gonna add a canvas, we're gonna move down to weight, scroll down to output, and we're gonna hit this little plus sign here on DP weight. This is going to give us a vertex group here. Very important, it's the key to this whole animation. So now we're gonna come down to the very first ring, and we are gonna put a dynamic paint on it, but this time we're gonna make it a brush. Add brush, change mesh volume to proximity, not volume with proximity, just proximity. So what we can do here, we can watch this in weight paint mode as it paints us a vertex map as it goes over the object, right? So that's a little bit strong for what we're looking for right now. So we're gonna go down, make sure we got the right ring, change this distance to maybe like 0.4 and try it again. Now watch it paint and it gets that's a little bit too far away. So there will be a little bit of experimenting if you're not using the exact object that I am, play around with it. We're gonna double this, we're gonna go to 0.8. Maybe 0.1 was just a little bit too much and I wasn't paying close enough attention. Also make sure you have the right object selected. Come through. This looks pretty good. This looks fine to me. I, I'm okay with that, I'm okay with that. Now that we've got that set up there, we're gonna come down to our second ring. We're also going to add a dynamic paint. It will also be a brush. We're gonna add our brush again. We're gonna change this to proximity, but we're gonna check erase paint down here. This is huge because as we will see now, if we go back into wave paint mode and watch this, one object will paint on our canvas and the other object behind it will remove it. What we're effectively doing is creating an animation for our vertex group. Now, what is so specifically cool about this is now we can apply any kind of modifier or simulation that requires a vertex group for different things and we can use that vertex group to just kind of simulate our animation so what we're going to do is we're going to add a displace we're going to click new we're going to go down here so once we're in here we're going to come in we're going to create our texture we're going to hit distorted noise or maybe you want clouds play around with this to see what you're going to want because every object with different geometry is going to kind of perform a little bit differently this is where you're going to get the difference between cloth and waves and bubbles and things like that playing around here is huge you can also import your own animated textures if you want something more specific for this i'm just going to play around for a minute and see where we end up till i have something that i like all right, so we've got something that I like. We're gonna come down here, we're gonna place a keyframe on size. We're gonna go all the way to the end. 
change it to something else, maybe something a little bit like this. So we're gonna have a little bit of fall off here. We're gonna set this to linear. We watch it play back. We've got some decent little animation going on. Nothing too crazy, but I think it's kind of cool. So now that we have this set up, we're gonna come back over here and select our vertex group DP underscore weight. You can already see that something has changed. This is a good point to save your project because you're gonna be caching multiple times, almost certainly. So I would recommend that you save it now. Actually, I think you have to. I don't think that you can bake without saving. So we're gonna let this bake run. Once we're through it, we're gonna select our circles. We're gonna turn them off and we're gonna watch our animation. We have this kind of wavy throughput sort of thing going on here. I think this is super rad, but it's not quite enough. It's definitely lacking something. So we're gonna come back up here. We're gonna add another displacement. Again, what you do with this is gonna to be totally up to you. However you want this to look is kind of the look you're going for here. It's just till you arrive at something that you think is cool. Again, once you've arrived at something that you like the look of, you're gonna throw your DP weight in the vertex group and our, our dynamic pane has already been simmed. So we should, in theory, just be able to play it again. And you can see we've got much more movement going on now. I really like how this looks. However, you can tell that once it starts moving, there are some issues. From not all angles is it visible, but look around your model, you're gonna see that there are things like this going on. This is where things can start to get a little bit heavy. We're gonna throw another sub div on this. We're gonna crank it up to two. And you can see that most of these problems are going away. Uh, I mean, it's not gone. <laughs> Obviously, you're gonna have to play around with your displacement a little bit. Maybe you wanna tone it down. Oh, my computer's very mad. But we can turn that sub div off. We, we're at 0.2, so maybe we wanna do 0.15, right? That still seems like it's a little bit much. Maybe we go 0.1, turn this on. And for the most part, it's gone. Right? But yeah, I think that this creates a, a super cool animation with very little work involved. It, it looks like you've done something very elaborate, some sort of cloth sim, some sort of whatever sim here to make this happen. And realistically, we did this in what, five minutes? This is all native Blender stuff. This is stuff that is just so, so cool to me that people I wish were talking about. So something that's super important at this stage is making sure that your object is UV'd. This part will not work unless your object is UV'd. Part of why I mentioned using my motion pack, uh, just simpler if you don't want a UV. If you do, all good. And what you want to do is you're gonna go file, save as, and you're going to save a new version of this file, call it wet map, call it whatever you want, but this is what we're gonna do our wet map in. We're gonna select our main object, we're gonna come over here to dynamic paint, where we're gonna change vertex to image sequence. We're gonna scroll down to where it says paint maps, we're gonna uncheck that and check wet maps. Set our root of solution to something like 1024, subsets to like two. You're gonna open up this cache path here, select the new file to where you know it's gonna be saved at, and then we're going to run our bake. It's going to take a second to get everything oriented, it's gonna lag for a minute, but then once it's done with that, it should be a fairly quick bake. Now that our bake is done, we are gonna go back into our old file, we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna go into our shader editor. Once we're in our shader editor, we are going to set up a very simple material. We're gonna take a principled shader, we're gonna duplicate it, make them opposing colors. Run them into a mix shader, into your material output. Then we're gonna have our wet map plugged into a color ramp, plugged into the factor. And from there, I have this set up just because I was doing a little bit of testing. This doesn't actually matter. Shouldn't make a difference as long as your object is actually UV'd. And from here, we can see that we've got color changing going on with our animation. Now, this might not be exactly what you're looking for. Maybe you want the color swapped around a bit. Maybe you want it to cover more area. However you want this to be, do some playing around with your color ramp and you're gonna see that you get this reveal wherever the warping is going on. Now, for me, I don't really care so much if the original material comes back to what it was. I kind of like this look that it gets here where it's worn or whatever. However, if you want it to completely go back to the way that it was with your rings here, just make sure that your bottom ring has a stronger strength than the top ring. Make sure that it completely is covering up any amount of paint that's going through before you do your bake. From here, your black and your white are gonna be your two shaders that you're mixing together, and you can really put whatever you want there. So here, I loaded in the material that I used on the main animation here, where we've got this green sort of subsurfy material on the outside. You can have the noise plugged into it or not, but it does make the renders a little bit longer, so I can't really recommend it. However, the inside is a material that's got a lot of subsurf, a lot of roughness, mixed in with my custom glass shader, which you can download for free in the description. And then again, just being run through a color ramp by our wet map. So yeah, if we just set up a simple scene with some pretty basic lighting and a backdrop, we can see that we've got the basic effect going on. From here, it is entirely about tweaking and what you want things to look like. You don't have to recache anything, but you can come in here to your displacements and you can crank them up. 
you, you can really do whatever you want from this point on. So let's say I want these guys to like really pop, right? Crank those guys out. Obviously with the subdiv on, it gets pretty slow, right? But if we go into rendered view now, give it a second, it can do it. I've got faith. This looks so good and it's so free. Obviously the materials that I've chosen to go with here are very noisy. They're gonna take a long time for the initial animation that I have up on my channel. I think I spent about 30 hours rendering this. You don't have to go through that to achieve something this cool. However, I really wanted to make sure that this looked as best as it possibly could. So if I open up the project file of my original logo, I just wanted to demonstrate this really quick. I've got the exact same things going on here. You can see that this is exactly how I did it. These are the settings that I used for my displacement in here and each one of the textures, one of them is a cloud texture and let's see, what's this one? This one's the cloud and this one is also clouds. It's just two different cloud textures. This was just me playing around until I found a look that I liked and that's huge. Playing around is, is everything. If you guys want to use the exact settings that I used in this, the project file will be available for free in the description down below. Now that we've gone through the basics of this, you can see that the main driving factor behind all of this is the dynamic paint. Dynamic paint is so useful and so undervalued in Blender. This creates this vertex map and this can be used with literally anything, bro. So many of these modifiers here have a section where you can add a vertex map to alter things. You can also use this if you're coming through with particle systems or simulations. I've done this with both hair and cloth. This effect is so powerful and I can't believe that I never put it together before now that this was possible. I'm sure people have been doing this forever, but I've never seen anybody put it out there and make it publicly available. And that's why I wanted to make this. If you got any usefulness out of it, please let me know down in the comment section. If you guys use this and you make something cool, feel free to tag me on Twitter. The absolute worst that's gonna happen is I like it and say good job. I like to see when people make things using uh, uh, something that I kind of came up with, even though this has, I, I take no ownership over anything. This is all default blender. I just happen to be an idiot that stumbled across a way to make this work in the way that it does. Obviously, you know, this is all native blender, so I'm taking ownership over none of this, but it is super cool to see how well it works and to be able to do things like this in Blender when for so long people have been telling me Blender can't do MoGraph, Blender can't do these things. It can do these things. Blender just makes it so difficult on the user to achieve it and that sucks and is super lame but the tools are here. You just have to dig a little deeper for them and hopefully I can continue to provide that digging for you guys so that I can dig a little bit deeper and the tools will be there for you guys to use. Thanks so much for watching and have a good one.